I don't think I've ever had a video that was more requested than this one. This is the new 2020 MacBook Pro 13 inch as Intel's new 10th generation processors has the new keyboard that's more reliable and better. And so many of you guys wanna know how does this compare in terms of video editing against the 16 inch MacBook Pro that also has that new keyboard and better specs. So first off, obviously there is a massive difference in size. The 13 inch is so much smaller and more compact, which makes sense why you guys wanna know how it's gonna do. So that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video. I just did a ton of tests in Final Cut Pro, in DaVinci Resolve, and in Premiere Pro. And I'm gonna let you guys know in which cases, with which codecs, and in what programs it's worth going for a 13 inch and how much performance difference there really is. Before I jump in, I wanna make sure that you know that this is the higher end 13 inch MacBook Pro with four Thunderbolt 3 ports. The base model didn't get any changes as far as performance, only the keyboard. But one great thing is that Apple actually doubled the amount of RAM and SSD compared to last year for the same price, effectively giving us a $400 price drop if you were gonna go for 16 gigs and 512 gigs of SSD. But the 16 inch costs $2,400 $400, at least for the MSRP price. So that's another $600 difference. Now there are some sales. I'll link a couple of great deals down in the video description below. The 16 inch actually has an i7, which nowadays i7, i5 doesn't really matter, but it is a six core and it's an older generation processor compared to the 10 gen quad core i5. And in multi-core score, the 13 inch does fairly well, but of course it is outperformed by that six core, but we have roughly a 25% difference. But then in single core performance, the 13 inch actually beats out the six inch by about 15% because of its newer 10 nanometer processor and that can actually help when you're rendering things like waveforms. I also tested Cinebench R20 which is a rendering benchmark and this is relevant say if you're transcoding footage to ProRes and here the 16 inch only outperformed the 13 inch by about 40% or so even though it has 50% more cores and those cores are older technology, so the 13 inch is actually doing surprisingly well. Graphics have always been a weak spot with the 13 inch MacBook Pros, but this year Apple is using the best G7 graphics from Intel, even on the i5 quad core, and because of that we have a great improvement compared to last year, but it's still not enough to compete with the AMD dedicated graphics that are in the 16 inch MacBook Pro, so those score about two and a half times higher in metal. And as you guys know, graphics performance really matters matters for video editing, and not just for video editing. Say if you're somebody that wants to do some gaming after your edits are done, here, instead of seeing two and a half times better performance, we actually see about three and a half times better performance with that dedicated graphics card, likely because of the extra video memory. Let's get into video editing, and this first test is gonna be a Final Cut exclusive. This is the Bruce X benchmark, which tests your rendering speed. Say you have you know titles, animations, lower thirds, and they need to be rendered. Here, the 16-inch MacBook Pro only took 17 seconds compared to 36 seconds for the 13 inch. Now that is a pretty big difference, about twice as fast, a little bit faster than that. But I do wanna point out that in the past, the previous version of this MacBook Pro 13 inch took a minute and 12 seconds. That is a huge improvement for this year. And this new MacBook Pro is much more capable. Now, before we move on to these real world video editing tests, including Blackmagic Raw, I know a lot of you guys requested it. I need to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning, with so much to explore, real projects to work on, and support from other creators. I know that with so much going on in the world right now, it is tough to stay productive. That's why I would highly suggest Greg McCohen's new class, Simple Productivity, How to Accomplish More with Less. You'll also find classes on video editing, photography, graphic design, animation, web development, and even things like business. Skillshare offers short classes designed for real life, so you can learn and grow with classes that fit your busy routine. Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to the first 500 people who click the link in the video description below. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. Thanks Skillshare, guys, make sure to go and check them out. All right, let's jump in. And I wanna say that's gonna be interesting seeing the difference in performance and speed between the video editing programs, particularly how much of a difference there is between a higher end laptop with dedicated graphics in a lower end laptop. I'm gonna start out with 20 seconds stabilization. In Final Cut, the 16 inch is about twice as fast. 
in DaVinci Resolve, it's actually more than three times as fast to stabilize. And in Premiere, it is actually slightly slower. So the new CPU, the new tensions are faster for simple tasks. That's why we're seeing that it's actually slightly faster than the 16 inch, but that doesn't matter. It takes forever. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a five minute project. This is 4K footage with a couple LUTs and film grain applied. It plays back really well in Final Cut and in DaVinci Resolve. It is nice and smooth, especially just with a LUT and some corrections. In DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut, if you end up stacking two LUTs on there as well, it, that is the limit of the graphics performance. But still, that is impressive for a 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now in Premiere Pro, it's a little different. So at full resolution 4K, we're playing back at about 15 frames per second. So half of that of the other programs. And as you probably guessed, the 16 inch has no issues whatsoever. Uh, I actually stacked four different LUTs and sharpening and this bokeh effect and color corrections and everything in Final Cut with the film grain played back perfectly smooth, uh, and I still had about 20% of the graphics left for other things. And I wanna mention that this 16 inch MacBook Pro is the first MacBook Pro that does great in Premiere Pro at full 4K, it plays back perfectly fine. As for rendering out this five minute project, the 16 inch is about three times as fast in Final Cut, and in Premiere Pro, it's also about three times as fast. And then in Resolve, not three times as fast, but it's close. So we're seeing a massive difference uh, when we're actually trying to export. Surprisingly, DaVinci Resolve is actually faster than Final Cut and Premiere Pro is a lot slower than the other two. So why is the 13 inch taking two and a half to three and a half times longer than the 16 inch? Well, it's not the processor. The processor actually isn't used that much here. It's the graphics. We don't have enough graphics performance and it's slowing down the CPU. If you guys want proof of that, I actually took off the LUTs and the color corrections. And then here in Resolve, you guys can see that there's not that much of a difference. It is still slower, but the difference between it is very, very little. So the CPU alone and the encoders, they do a good job, but not having that extra graphics performance really slows us down. Now let's take a look at an 8-bit H.265 project and in Resolve, it actually plays it back smoother. We have a little bit more of the graphics overhead. It's playing back nicely, but in Premiere Pro, it actually plays back worse. We drop down to 12 frames per second playback, which is pretty bad. When we export this to an H.265 file, Final Cut gets much faster than the 13 inch, twice as fast, which is really nice. We also get gains in the other results, but not as big. And overall, in Final Cut and Resolve, the 16 inch is twice as fast, but in Premiere Pro, it is five times faster. Premiere really doesn't like this 13 inch MacBook Pro with integrated graphics, whereas the other two, they do, you know, surprisingly good. And in Premiere, not only is the playback half a slow or even slower, three times slower than the other programs, but rendering just takes forever. Because of this, I have to say that if you're using Premiere Pro, don't get the 13 inch MacBook Pro. You can drop down your playback resolution, but it's still not a great experience for how much money you're spending. I would absolutely say, get the 16 inch MacBook Pro, especially if you use the link below, you guys can get at least a couple hundred bucks off of it. I also wanted to test out 10 bit HDR. This is 4K 60. The 16 inch has no issues, has lots of overhead for extra effects, whereas the 13 inch is just a choppy mess. Now in Final Cut or Resolve, you could actually edit up to maybe 24 frames per second, not this 60 FPS. I didn't even test Premiere Pro. I know that is gonna be really terrible. And then as far as exporting, the 13 inch is gonna take just way too long. So for this type of HDR footage, I would not recommend the 13 inch. The same thing goes for C200 raw footage. Um, Final Cut deals with this the best and surprisingly, it played it back semi-smoothly and I was able to edit, um, whereas other programs don't do that well. Uh, so as far as playback, you could probably do like 24 frames per second at full 4K, which is surprising. But when we go to export this specific project, instead of taking about 15 minutes, it takes about an hour. So much, much longer. Now, I know a lot of you guys asked for Blackmagic raw footage. So here you go. This is in DaVinci Resolve. 
and the 13 inch falls apart, as you guys could tell. Now this is very interesting because when you do the Blackmagic RAW playback test, for 6K 12 to one, it actually shows us 33 frames per second playback, and this is 24 FPS footage compared to 76 on the 16 inch. But when we're actually playing it back, the performance is nowhere near that on the 13 inch MacBook Pro. I thought maybe it's because I have a couple LUTs applied, I have it graded, so I took that off, and it still performed at about three frames per second. And I checked the settings, I did have metal decoding enabled for Blackmagic RAW. So it seems like that playback decoding test doesn't work when you're actually editing video, at least with integrated graphics. And then I went ahead and I exported this to ProRes 422, and instead of taking about four minutes with the 16 inch, it took about an hour. Now that doesn't mean that I don't recommend the 13 inch for video editing. I think for some people, if you're dealing with compressed 4K footage, H.264 or H.265, which a lot of you guys are, you're gonna do some minor color corrections, you're gonna maybe apply it one LUT, you're gonna have a great experience in Final Cut and resolve. For those cases, you want something compact, this is still a good value. But if you can handle the extra size, you can spend a little bit more money, you can have a much better experience with the 16 inch. Even with the base model, you're not gonna be limited with the effects, with color corrections. In Premiere Pro, it's gonna perform twice as good or more. It is just a much better overall value for video editors. Now for photo editors, the 13 inch actually does surprisingly good. Now we actually have a full detailed long comparison as far as the screen, speakers, keyboards, photo editing, a bunch of stuff. I'll leave a link to that in the video description that you guys could check out if you're interested. I wanna hear you guys' opinions as always, and you guys can click that circle above if you guys wanna subscribe and watch a couple great videos right over there. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.